Today we're going to talk about the Spanish, the conquerors, the conquistadors. Look at that face. That is the face you don't want to run into. Okay. Uh, what, are the Spanish jerks or something? Are they uh, just going around chopping up people and making them convert to Christianity and that's just, you know, because they're mean people? Well, I want you to understand the Spanish a little bit better, and uh, we can do that by looking at this map right here. This is Spain, right over here. Here we got Portugal over here. We got the French over here. This is what will be Spain. This line right here is where uh, the Islamic uh, kingdoms, the Islamic forces, went all the way through. They almost completely took over Spain, and even a little bit of. Uh, of what is now France. Uh, this is in 713, the line right here, and then in 1021 they were pushed back here, and then in 1269 they were pushed back here. So I mean they were going back and forth. These uh, Muslim kingdoms and the Christian kingdoms, they were pushed. This was the front line of the religious wars between the Christian the Christians and the Muslims. So it is a very war-torn for centuries. We're not talking about a, like World War II that went on for a, less than a decade. Um, you know, the war against terrorism that has been going on for, uh, um, you know, coming up to about 20 years almost. Uh, we're talking hundreds of years. 713, 1021, 1269. Finally, in the, the 1500s, you know, then the, the 1400s, they finally are kicking all of the uh, Muslims out. Uh, then by Columbus's, um, by the time Columbus set sail, they are taking over the last part of Spain from the Muslim kingdom. So it has taken them hundreds of years to reestablish a Christian kingdom in Spain. This is the backdrop to what is going on when these conquistadors are then launched on these ships to go across the ocean and this is what you get. You get hardened warriors that are used to, uh, this is all they know at this point, is religious warfare. They do not want to run into another situation where another powerful religion rises up and challenges them. They're going to make sure that the people that they encounter are Christian. And that's it. There's just no other way for, for the Spanish. Uh, in addition to that, they are skilled warriors. They have been fighting for centuries. They have developed great technology for fighting. The best swords, the best armor, uh, the, the, the best war horses. The, these are, are all things that the Spanish bring with them across the ocean uh, once the Americas are discovered. And the American Indians really don't have a chance. Remember, we, we talked about this uh, in the last chapter. There are no horses in, the, um, in uh, the Americas. So when these people come riding these huge beasts, I mean, if you've ever seen a horse, they're huge. They're not small animals. They're not like little doggies or, you know, cats or something. Uh, these are huge animals that are very powerful and very strong. And for a human to be on top of such a large animal, riding it around and maybe run you over with it, is very intimidating. It's very difficult to deal with. In addition to that, you shoot them with an arrow or hit them with a spear, and it just bounces off their chest, their armor, their arms, whatever. You, know, you, can't, you can't kill them. Uh, these people seem invincible. And then on top of that, they've got these uh, terrific swords that are, are great for warfare, and they cut through your spear and... and um, yeah, so there are stories of, of the Spanish just coming over, and it's very easy for them to conquer. Not only do they have uh, the tactics, the equipment, but they have the drive to go and conquer, because that is really what they've known for centuries. That this, is, this is who they've become because of their circumstances. They've been on the front line of religious wars, and they are bringing that religious war to an unsuspecting uh, American population. So uh, they have guns, you know, something that the, the uh, American, Native Americans have never seen before. Uh, horses, haven't seen them before. These are uh, huge advantages, both tactically and in, are very intimidating. Think about when you're having a fight. You know, your forces over here, their forces over here, and 
you know, they have another set of forces. You can bring your whole force with all your horses, beat them up over here, and, you know, just take them on one at a time because you're so fast with the horses. Um, so strategically, the, the horses give the Spanish a major advantage in warfare. Um, the, the populations that they meet just don't stand a chance. All right, so missions. Here is a uh, one of our our uh, words. It's a combination of a church and school designed to spread religion. We have a picture of it right here. Um, you'll see these today in the American Southwest, all throughout Mexico and so forth, uh, because the Spanish, as we saw yesterday, they start colonizing the uh, American Southwest. They go all the way up through here. And the reason why they go up through here is because of this man right here, Francisco Coronado. That's a name we have to remember. Francisco Coronado in 1540 uh, was looking for the seven cities of gold, and that took him up to like Arizona, New Mexico area, uh, and traveled all throughout um, Southwest. Here's Texas over here. Got Oklahoma, Arizona, New Mexico, oh, I'm sorry, New Mexico, Arizona, as well as parts of Mexico. He's going all throughout this area, looking for the seven cities of gold and claiming, mapping this area, first of all, so that people know where they're going when they follow him. Conquering these uh, tribes that are out here, like the Pueblo, and uh, claiming this land for Spain. So the Spanish become uh, much more powerful because now they have this, this area because of Francisco Coronado. Uh, so they start, uh, in the name of God, they start conquering the people there, converting them over, as we saw yesterday when we talked about the Spanish. One interesting story that I want to leave you with is that, uh, well, uh, not yet, hold on. Let me get back to that. Germs. This is definitely something we need to talk about. Another reason why the American Indians could not stand up to the Europeans, even if they weren't the conquistadors, the Spanish. Um, when the Europeans came over, remember, they've had some serious diseases going on in Europe. Remember the uh, bubonic plague wiping out um, one third of Europe, but they have other illnesses that the American Indians have never seen before. Their bodies do not have the antibodies to fight off these diseases. They don't, just don't have the immune system that can fight off a lot of these diseases that the Europeans have built up an immunity. You, know, you can have, you can carry a disease and not have it because your body is able to fight it off and then you start, you know, somebody catches a cold or whatever, they have a disease in them that's not really hurting them. It's not really bad, but then they spread to somebody whose immune system is not used to those kinds of diseases and it overwhelms them. And we talk about how devastating the bubonic plague was for the European nations, wiping out one third. Uh, many estimates uh, talk about that the uh, American, Native American population, when these diseases hit, wipes out about 90% of the population. That's unimaginable. Uh, it's just, it's just too crazy to think about that whole villages, everything gets wiped out. Now, what you have to remember, remember we talked about these uh, American Indians, why we needed archaeology in order to learn about the American Indians is because they don't have a written language. They didn't write down their histories. They didn't, you know, everything was passed down by word of mouth. Well, now with these diseases hitting so quickly and so devastatingly, the people that were responsible for passing down the histories, for passing down the culture, passing down you know, the great deeds of, of people, you know, their heroes, their philosophers, their, their, um, their ways of thinking, you know, their religion, anything that, that needed to be passed down that normally would be written down is now lost to the American Indians because of these deaths. So it has a devastating effect uh, on the American Indians, not just because people died, but their culture suffers, their, their willingness to resist. And then, of course, you have... Uh, the religious aspect that maybe, you know, if we resist these people, this is God punishing us for, for that and just wiping out all these populations. So psychologically, it is, uh, it's a backbreaker for the American Indians, and it makes it much easier for the Europeans to come in and do whatever they want, claim land, uh, conquer. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a real bad situation for the Native Americans on all fronts. Uh, the story that I wanted to leave you with uh, in the name of God is the, um, a story of 
uh, a priest that comes over with the conquistadors and he's going to set up a mission in uh, Mexico or somewhere in Texas what today is Texas and uh, he gets shipwrecked and he survives and he's picked up by a, a local tribe they nurse him back to health and he teaches them about Jesus and about God and, and the whole town converts they love Jesus they love what this guy is saying they, they love the guy they think he's a, a, a great man and is just you know really happy that that he's there uh, it's a great great story well then uh, word comes that the conquistadors have landed nearby and are marching towards their town and they hear stories of the conquistadors doing terrible things to the the people of the other towns and you know the 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 priest is very excited now he's going to be rescued he's going to be able to go back to spain or you know get supplies to set up his mission and so forth and the the townspeople the the american indians they are looking at these two different things this great man that they highly respect and love and then this force his countrymen that are doing unspeakable things to the nearby uh, villages and uh, they just can't they they refuse to believe that this priest is of the same people as these other people they just it, it's not possible this man of god this this uh, this wonderful person cannot be this of the same tribe as these people that are going around uh, conquering everybody with in cold blood and uh, it was just a, just an interesting take on um, what was going on and, and the confusion between the you know what the american indians it just a lot of things just didn't make sense things were moving too quickly that they couldn't wrap their heads around what what was coming at them they didn't understand uh, this group of people and it would lead to a lot of heartbreak and a lot of hardship for the american indians uh, unfortunately uh, so that's the uh, spanish they are the conquistadors they came around to conquer to convert to take over land uh, they are you know the epitome of the gold god and glory crew and uh, they were well suited for conquering because of their history um, over in spain <laughs>